Welcome to 21st Sports Recap and Reaction for the New Orleans Saints at the Atlanta Falcons in their Week 17 matchup played January 3rd, 2016. We're going to go over the scores and the stats and give our breakdown and analysis for this NFC South Division rivalry game. Of course, there was not any playoff implications in this game, but the Saints looking to avoid Sean Payton's first 10 loss season, and the Falcons looking to go above 500 in Dan Quinn's first season as head coach, as the Falcons had just narrowly missed the playoffs as they were close, but that seven game losing streak hurt their efforts. By entering the game, they came into it 8-7, and seven, and to enter this game, the Saints came into this one 6-9. and nine. But to start things off in the first quarter, Shane Graham would put the first points on the scoreboard with a 51-yard field goal about midway through the first quarter with just under seven minutes still left in the first, and it was three to nothing Atlanta over at New Orleans. Then with just over three minutes left in the first, Tim Hightower punched it in from a yard out. Kai Forbath added the extra point, and the Saints were in the lead now, seven to three. So that was the score after one. Then in the second quarter, just over half a minute in, Matt Ryan hit Tony Moeke for a 42-yard field goal. Shane Graham added the extra point, and it was 10-7. Falcons back on top now by three. Then just moments later, three minutes later, three and a half minutes to be a little closer to exact, Drew Brees hit Big Ben Watson for a 13-yard touchdown. Forbath added the extra point, and it was back to the Saints in the lead, up 14-10 to with less than 11 minutes left before halftime. Then with less than half a minute left before halftime, Matt Ryan went to Devonta Freeman for a four-yard touchdown. Graham added the extra point, and the Falcons were now back in the lead, up 17-14 to at the half. Half. Then in the third quarter, with about five and a half minutes left in the third, Kai Forbath scored the only points of the third quarter with a 41-yard field goal, and this game was tied at 17 apiece. So now after the field goal, the Falcons would take over on their own 27 after the kickoff, and they would move the ball to midfield and into New Orleans territory. They got all the way down into the red zone when they converted on a third and 10 from the 31 when Matt Ryan went to Hardy for a 16-yard reception and made it first and 10 at the 15. And they would bring the third quarter to a close two plays later. They opened up the fourth with a third and four from the nine. Matt Ryan went back to Hardy. He picked up six yards. And that was a first and goal on the three. They give it to Freeman. Jenkins is there. He forces the fumble and recovers. And so now the Saints would take over after the Falcons were on the three-yard line. So they were knocking on the door, but they couldn't come in. And so now the Saints would take over on their own four, and they would now start marching in the opposite direction as they would end up converting on some third downs as they pushed the ball up to midfield. And on third and 11, Breeze went to Coleman. He picked up 21. It was a first down at the Atlanta 35. They got another first down. They got into the red zone. There was a third and one from the Atlanta 14. Hightower picks up two to extend the drive. And then on second and one from the Atlanta three-yard line, Cadet fumbles the ball. Godfrey forces the fumble. Alford recovers. And so now it was the Falcons ball. So first the, the Falcons fumble on the four. And the Saints take over on the four. March all the way back. And now they fumble on the three. And now the Falcons would take over on the one. So the Falcons take over on the one, and they actually got into New Orleans territory. Went on second and nine from the 38. Matt Ryan went to Julio Jones. He picks up 27 yards, but on third and nine from the 34, a penalty for unnecessary roughness against the Falcons would push them back into to the New Orleans 43, and they would have to punt the ball on 4th and 18. So after 7 plays, the Falcons would punt it to the Saints, but the Saints would go 3 and out as they had brought the game to the 2-minute warning, and an incomplete pass coming out of the 2-minute warning on 3rd and 3 from the 21 would force them to punt on the next play. So now, the Falcons would take over. The game still tied. Less than 2 minutes on the clock. The ball on the Atlanta 24. 
Matt Ryan drops back to pass. He's looking for Freeman, and Sanford is there. He picks off the ball, and so now the Saints would take over on the Atlanta 25. Hightower picked up five yards, then three yards, and now it was third and two at the 17. Hightower runs for nine, and it's first and goal on the eight. Drew Brees takes a knee. The Falcons burn their last time out. Brees then sets up for the field goal, and New Orleans burns their last time out with just three seconds on the clock. Kai Forbath comes out to attempt a 30-yard field goal on third and goal from the 12. It's up, it's good, and the Saints win. So the Saints win this game and what could possibly be Sean Payton's final game in New Orleans, although I think that would be a mistake by the Saints to let him go. But the Saints are now 7-9 on the season, 3-5 on the road the Falcons 500 on the year in Dan Quinn's first year as head coach and they're also 500 at home so 8-8 eight and eight on the season 4-4 four and four at home for the Falcons as they were so close so close to getting in the playoffs so close to going above 500 and having a winning season but Dan Quinn has definitely got the Falcons moving in the right direction so it'll be interesting to see what happens come the offseason as now technically it is the offseason but in this game, Drew Brees, another 300-yard passing game. He was 32 for 42, 323 passing yards and a touchdown. Hightower, 16 carries for 66 yards and a touchdown. He also had five receptions for 41 yards, giving him 107 yards on the game. Coleman had five catches for 81 yards. Cadet had six catches for 77 yards to go along with his three rushes for six yards, which gave him 83 total yards on the game. Ben Watson, six catches for 59 yards and a touchdown. And Willie Sneed, three catches for 35 yards. And for the Falcons, Matt Ryan, 24 for 36, 334 passing yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Of course, that interception came at the worst possible moment as that would set up the game-winning field goal and put the Saints in field goal range. And Devonta Freeman, 24 carries for 81 rushing yards. He also had two catches for 18 receiving yards, which gave him 99 total yards in this game. He had a receiving touchdown as well. And Julio Jones, nine catches for 149 yards. Jacob Tammy, four catches for 61 yards. Loiki had two catches for 47 yards and a touchdown. We look at the kickers in this game. And for the Saints, Kai Forbath, 2 for 2 on the field goals, 2 for 2 on the extra points as he was perfect. Shane Graham, 1 for 2 on the field goals, 2 for 2 on the extra points as his missed field goal. Would it technically end up being the difference? And we look at the defense for the Saints. Cameron Jordan with a sack. Sanford with that interception that would set up the game-winning field goal. Jenkins also with that forced fumble that would prevent the Saints from coming away with any points as they were right there on the doorstep. And then for the Falcons on defense, Godfrey had a forced fumble. But they did not have any sacks or interceptions in this game. And then we look at the team stats, 25 first downs for the Falcons, 24 first downs for the Saints. As the Saints swept the season series and it was actually the sixth time in the last 10 years that they have done so with Sean Payton as their head coach. We look at third down efficiency though, 8 for 12 for the Falcons, 66% conversion rate, 6 for 10 for the Saints, 60% conversion rate. They went for it once on fourth, did not convert. Total net yards, 419 for the Falcons, 390 for the Saints. On the ground, Atlanta netted 92 yards. New Orleans, 67 net rushing yards. Through the air, the Falcons netted 327. Matt Ryan sacked once for a loss of 7 yards. And the Saints netted 323. They did not allow any sacks. We look at the penalties in this game. Four penalties apiece for each of these two teams. The Saints penalized 45 yards. And the Falcons penalized 32 yards. The Saints had one fumble, which they lost. The Falcons had two fumbles. They lost one, recovered one. And in the red zone, the Saints two for five. And the Falcons one for two. The Saints 40%. The Falcons 50%. As both teams were struggling in the red zone. Their defense is coming up with big stops. And the time of possession, 30 minutes, 26 seconds for the Falcons. 29 minutes, 34 seconds for the Saints. This is a very tightly contested game. It always is when division rivals go at it, especially with these teams. 
although the Saints pretty much own the Falcons with Sean Payton as a head coach as he's won 15 out of 20 games against the Falcons in his tenure with the Saints. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with New Orleans. If they're going to make any moves in the offseason, they already got rid of Rob Ryan during the season. It'll be interesting to see if Sean Payton sticks around in New Orleans or is he moving on to maybe greener pastures? We shall see. That remains to be seen. But the Saints, they do have, of course, Drew Brees, a Hall of Fame quarterback. But they have a lot of issues on that defense. But their defense came up pretty big today. They were really playing some of their best football of the year on the defensive side. Although, just the one interception, but that came at the most opportune moment. But the way they were playing there in the red zone was pretty spectacular. As they were really shutting it down. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Definitely interested to read your thoughts and opinions. Thank you very much for listening. It's greatly appreciated. I hope you're having a good week and having a great weekend. And enjoy all the sports.